Hi boys and girls, today we're gonna show you how to throw a ball overhand. This is the primary way to throw a ball in sports like baseball, as a position player in softball, and as a quarterback in football or a player in water polo who is passing or shooting. We're gonna show you five simple steps to learn the throwing technique, then we're gonna give you a chance to practice. So follow along and learn how to throw a ball properly overhand. The first thing we need to learn today is how to properly complete the five simple steps of throwing a ball overhand. And we begin with our feet. So Mrs. Worrell and Mr. Rich are gonna show you how to stand sideways like you're riding a skateboard. Feet would be about shoulder width apart and your knees are not locked out, they're slightly bent. From the front view, as if we were playing catch with them, it's gonna look like this. So they're not facing their target, which is me. They're actually standing sideways or what we call side orientation. Now, the next motion that we need to know is what we call our cape. So we're gonna have them lift their cape up like they're a superhero and notice that their elbow is pointing at us, the target, okay? Now, if they stand sideways, it will look like this. So it is not that we're doing the cape, not with the hand that's holding the ball, but with our other hand, the hand that is in, in front of us or pointing towards our target. The other hand is for holding the ball. So if they stand front view, one more time, cape is pointing at our target. And now the very next thing they are going to do is they're going to use the hand that's holding the ball to make a cobra. So they're lifting their hand up behind them. And if we have them stand sideways to show you, there's a couple of things we need you to remember about the cobra. In this case, the two fingers on top of the ball are the fangs of the cobra. If it's facing away from you, you are safe. If you turn the ball, towards your head, you are gonna get bit by the cobra. So that would be a mistake. Turn the ball away. If you drop your hand down, we call this the sleeping cobra. This is incorrect. We wanna have our hand up above our elbow and our wrist bent with our fingers pointing away. And then the final mistake that we see quite often is what we call the dead cobra, where we're holding our hand upside down. We are not ready to throw with this motion. So again, cobra, fingers point away, Elbow is bent at about shoulder height so that you are ready for the next step in the motion. Once you have your cape and cobra set with your side stance, the very next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna use your lead leg to step towards the target. So for Mrs. Worrell, that is her right foot. For Mr. Rich, that's his left foot. So you're just gonna pick your foot up and you're gonna step towards your target. Let's see that from a side view. Again, it's the foot that's underneath your cape. It's your lead leg. Very good. And one more time from the front. Pick your foot up, step towards your target. That's the step, that's technique number three. So now number four is where we twist our shoulders and we throw the ball. Now they're not gonna throw the ball here, but we're twisting and we're bringing our arm forward one more time. The twist is gonna help build some momentum. And then the throw is where you would normally release the ball. Now the very last thing you do here, once you let go of the ball, is we call this paint the fence. So once I let go, my arm's gonna swing down towards my opposite hip, and it looks like I'm painting a fence vertically. Let's see that one more time. Paint the fence, good. That is the follow through, and that's the last important step to throwing a ball correctly. Now let's put the five steps together in one smooth, throwing motion. We'll start slow and we'll build up a little bit faster. So the first thing you have to do is stand sideways so that your chest is not facing your target. Mrs. Worrell is an example of a left-handed thrower here and Mr. Rich would be a righty. So the first thing you got to do is show me your cape, elbow pointing at your target. Then get your cobra up with your throwing hand. That's the hand that holds the ball. Make sure your fangs are pointing away. No sleeping cobra and no dead cobra. Next move is the step that's move number three. Then we have the twist and throw and the, the paint the fence or the follow through. Let's see that one more time. Start putting them together. Cape, cobra, step, twist, throw, follow through. And one time all in order, nice and smooth. All five together. Cape, cobra, step, twist, follow through. Very good. Now, before we go practice, I wanna show you three of the most common mistakes that we see in young students like yourself. The first one 
is we'll have students who step with the wrong foot. So Mrs. Worrell should be stepping forward with her right foot closest to us. And Mr. Rich, because he's a right, he should be stepping with his left foot. But most often we see young students who are learning this skill, they will step with their wrong foot, which is incorrect. It's gonna change the throwing pattern for you. It's probably gonna stall out your progress a little bit. So one more time, stepping with the wrong foot would look like this, where you step with the same foot as the hand that's throwing the ball. Instead, we need to step with our lead leg, which looks like this. Good. Now, the second mistake that we see most often is we see students only swing their arm forward, but they forget the twist of the shoulder. So when they go through the throwing motion like this, they're only using their arm. They're not gonna get much distance because they don't have enough of their body being used in the motion. So one more time, only using your arm would look like this. It's gonna be a very weak throw. It's probably not gonna travel very far. Instead, we want you to use your whole body like this. Really get your twist of your shoulders into the throwing motion. Okay, one more time. Twist with the shoulders, push with your back leg, and then swing your arm as hard as you can. Now the last mistake is students will forget to follow through. So when they release the ball, their arm will stop moving, and that's gonna reduce the distance that the ball will travel because you're not applying enough force. So when you swing your arm forward, don't stop when you let go of the ball. Like this, we want you to let go of the ball and continue following through, and that would be our final step, which is painting the fence. Swing that arm down and do it with a fast motion. One more time. Follow through. Paint the fence. Very good. Now that we've learned the five steps to a proper overhand throw, we're going to give you a chance to practice your throwing motion in front of a mirror or a reflective surface like a window, sliding glass door. In this case, Mrs. Whirl and Mr. Rich have a window here with a good reflection. So they're going to practice their throwing motion. They're going to make sure they're doing all five steps, the cape, the cobra, the step, the twist and throw, and the follow through. It should be one smooth throwing motion, and you're watching yourself in your reflection to make sure that you're doing it properly. Now, if you don't have a mirror or a reflective surface, I want you to take an iPad, a, a phone, and I want you to video yourself doing five throwing motions, nice and smooth, and then go back and watch the video and just evaluate yourself. Look for the five steps. Make sure you're not leaving anything out. Now you've had a chance to practice your throwing motion in front of a mirror or reflective surface. Now is your chance to actually throw with an object. In this case, we're going to be throwing a paper ball against the wall. So Mr. Rich and Mrs. Whirl have a, a regular sheet of printer paper here. They're going to wad it up into a ball. And we're outside so that we can throw against this wall. Now, if you're at home, throwing outside against the wall is probably safer. If you have to do this indoors, make sure you ask for permission first. But it is a paper ball, so it shouldn't damage anything. And we have Mrs. Whirl. She's put an X on the wall using painter's tape. And Mr. Rich has a post-it note. This is going to be their target. Now, they're not standing super close or super far. This paper ball will travel to the wall, provided they throw it hard enough. So this is going to be a chance for you to practice throwing as hard as you can, aiming at a target for accuracy, and then you can adjust yourself closer or further from the wall if you need to. So get yourself in your side stance, get your cape and cobra, and then go ahead and go through your throwing motion and throw it as hard as you can against the wall, aiming at your target. Throw it as hard as you can. Don't hold back on this. This is a chance for you to really throw and practice your throwing motion with full effort. You're aiming at that target, the post-it note, the X. I want you to get 10 throws using this paper ball, throwing it hard against the wall. The nice thing about throwing a paper ball is that it is a lightweight object that really forces you to twist and throw at full effort and practice your follow through. This is your chance to build up some strength and some confidence in your throwing motion. Again, 10 throws with the paper ball against a wall, preferably outside. Use something like painter's tape or a post-it note to use as a target. Now that we've learned the five steps to an overhand throw and we practice both in front of the mirror and by throwing the paper ball against the wall, now it's time for you to play catch with a partner. So grab a family member, a sibling, a parent, a cousin, and let's learn how to play catch together. Now today's assignment is going to be to play catch for 10 minutes. So you just need to pick the ball that you use 
In this case, they're using a softy ball because they are catching with bare hands. If you have a baseball or a softball, please play catch using a mitt. That mitt is designed to protect your hands and help you catch without getting hurt. If you're barehanded, a softer object is going to be better. Now we have a couple different size balls here. Let me explain to you why you would want to use a different object. A smaller object that has a little bit more weight to it will throw easier because it's, it's better suited for the size of our hand. If we have bigger hands, we can throw a bigger object. The advantage to the bigger object is it is easier to catch. So if you're younger and you have a hard time catching, a bigger object is better but it is harder to throw, especially with small hands. So consider the ball that you choose to play catch with. You can always choose to play catch with a pair of rolled up socks if you don't have any balls. The rolled up socks are nice and light, but in this case, they're using a softy ball. Now, when you play catch with a partner, you are your partner's coach and your partner is your coach. You're gonna look for each other's throwing motion. You're gonna check for proper technique. That, are, that is the five steps that we told you about the cape the cobra the step the twist and throw and the follow through if they forget one or they do them in the wrong order or just doesn't look right you can coach them up and teach them how to do it properly and just be a reminder for them but be kind with your words and your actions and your job is to play catch for 10 minutes here so if you start by playing catch close together i'd like you to start spreading out a little bit so mr rich is going to step back he's going to create a little bit more distance and that's going to challenge mrs Worrell's strength of her throw the farther away mr rich gets she's gonna have to throw it harder and the same thing for him we're aiming at our partner's chest their hands should be up and ready to catch you've got to show your partner that you're ready to receive the ball by putting your hands in front of your chest ready showing them for a, with a target and if you're not perfectly accurate that's okay today is about practicing the throwing motion the catching is just a little extra bonus so play catch for 10 minutes do your best to do your steps properly and develop a really mature, smooth throwing motion.